Matthew, the 24th chapter. Be ye ready is no joking matter. I'm going to show you where I got this message in a few moments. I'll show you how it came about. Matthew 24. Let's begin to read verse 42. Beginning to read at verse 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in, that, in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, would have not suffered his house to be broken in. Therefore be ye also ready. Would you repeat that line with me, please? Therefore be ye also ready. All right? For in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made rule over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Heavenly Father, I believe that you're sending your angels soon to gather your elect from the four winds. The coming of the Lord is drawing nigh. Lord, you spoke so clear to me this past week in a dream. And I'm going to share that dream in just a moment. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you awaken our hearts. You awakened me in a new way. And you told me to preach this this afternoon. And I obey you. Lord, I don't know who you sent here. I don't know why you sent them. Lord, this is for many that attend this church. And I pray, Holy Spirit, you awaken us. You love us. You're our Heavenly Father. But Lord, you, you mean business. Your word is no joke. It's not a laughing matter. Lord, you are not delaying your coming. Your coming, you said, as a thief in the night. But that night is not to overtake us. We're to be wide awake. So, Holy Ghost, come now upon me. Let the Spirit of the Lord rest upon me. That every word I speak be to the glory and honor of God. Oh, Holy Spirit, quicken my message, I pray. Quicken this word. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. Lord, those who are not ready, prepare them. God, convict them. Lord, if you have to shake them, Lord, I don't care if you have to let them slink down in their seats. Whatever you have to do, do it, Lord. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me tell you why I'm preaching this particular message at this time. I had an unusual dream last Tuesday night. Now, the Bible does say in Acts 2.17, in the last days, your old men shall dream dreams. I qualify. In all seriousness, I qualify. I don't get many dreams, and I don't preach on my dreams because I'm a Bible preacher. And you know that we've taught you here that anything that does not conform to the Word of God is to be rejected outright. And I'm telling you right now, this is not on the, my dream has nothing to do with theology. It has nothing to do with some great biblical truth as far as amplifying it, other than to make it clear what Jesus is saying. And I'm just telling you how God awakened my soul, how he awakened my spirit, that I should preach this more often. And I want, I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. But before I do, well, I want you to know that <clears throat> this is not doctrine. It's not some new revelation. It's simply the Holy Spirit was the Spirit of God prompting me and speaking to me about His coming. Don't want to build any doctrine about it? Remember that. I don't have much confidence in dreams and any dream, vision, or, or so-called revelation has to absolutely be framed in the Scripture. We are Bible believers in this church. Now, having said that, let me share with you without trying to talk about a doctrine or anything else. Just the Holy Ghost speaking to me. <clears throat> in my dream, I was suddenly awakened by the, the knowledge that I had been snatched. I had been caught up, and I was in some kind of a conveyance. I don't know whether it was a chariot. I didn't see the conveyance. But I knew that there were others in this, and that there was an angel of the Lord that was, and there was a sense of just racing swiftly through streets and in, into houses. This, this conveyance knew no barriers, and I had a sense that I'm, I'm on my way home. I'm saved. The Lord has come. 
I am being gathered by the angel of the Lord. The chariots of the Lord are thousands upon thousands. The coming of the Lord is as, as lightning is from the east and to the west. And there's, there was a sense of swiftness, but it's almost though I would see it in slow motion. This lightning coming, I was seeing it in slow motion. I didn't see a driver, didn't see an angel. I didn't see the conveyance. I just had a sense. I knew I was being carried and taken. And it was moving swiftly. And, and people were being snatched from homes and from the streets. And I remember specifically going into a particular home. And we were moving swiftly. And there were three people that I recognized. Two were friends and one was a family member. And we went right by. And, and there was a sense, a sudden sense. Oh, God, they're being left behind. And the Lord allowed me to, for a few fleeting moments, to, to sense the terror of what it would be like to be left behind when the angels of the Lord go and gather his elect from the four winds. The sense, I, I was made to know at that time that even though those who called themselves Christians, and were really not Christians who despised the grace of God, misused and flagrantly flaunted the grace of God, went out and sinned and said, I can easily confess, and never did forsake their sins. There was a sense that even though they were sleeping, they were aware. There was an awareness that they, the Lord has, is coming, and there's a sudden moment because I saw hands being raised, people reaching out and waving. In fact, as, as we kept moving on, I, there were people that were sense waving, hey, and, and trying to get attention to this this uh, driver and this conveyance and I was screaming and yelling get out in the open get out in the open and people were trying to get away from the crowd to get away from the crowd get out as if I, I thought if they were out in the open they could be seen and caught up but we it went swiftly on but there was a sense that I have never experienced in my life even though all my lifetime my father taught on the coming of the Lord my grandfather taught about it. The Bible says we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye suddenly. We're going to be changed, the Bible says. This corrupt body shall put on an incorrupt body, just like his. And the Bible says that we're to be prepared and ready and expecting. He said he's coming for those who look for his appearing. And those who are expecting, even though they sleep, they're going to be caught if it's in the middle of the night. Now, I'm not going to get into the doctrine of the rapture. I'm not going to get doctrine when, when this happens before the tribulation, mid-tribulation, or after the tribulation. I am just telling you that I had a sense of the horror it's going to be for those who knew the gospel, who had one appeal after another, who knew the grace and the mercy of God, and they were not ready. They were not taken they were not gathered in this and i remember the swiftness of moving and i, I was thinking if you were certainly going this street going down this street uh if you could just rush over here and i see people racing trying to get where they were visible in this uh conveyance just passing by in this terrible sense lord i know i'm saved i know i'm redeemed i'm going home but those three those two friends and that member of my family, and there was a terror. Two shall be sleeping in the bed, one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, you never know, he's coming as a thief in the night. He's coming. Folks, there was no sense of speed, there's no sense of travel, Nothing at all, but suddenly it was like coming out of a cloud. And suddenly I was stepping with everyone around me. We were stepping as out of a cloud, out of a fog, out of time into eternity. Suddenly, there was no sense of being carried out into a cosmos or anywhere else. Suddenly we were home. We, we were in eternity. And there was, I, I remember the sense that I have the absolute serenity as we stepped out into eternity through this cloud there was a sense of peace and all I could see around me people were feeling their bodies they were feeling their hands and they were caressing their faces looking at their hands there was no shouting 
I didn't see Jesus anywhere. It was just a sense. It happened so quickly. It, was, it seemed to be a gathering place. The Bible said he's going to gather his uh, elect from the four winds. And suddenly I looked and there were my two friends and my loved one coming through the cloud and into eternity. Nobody was looking at each other. Nobody was, there was no embracing, there was nothing. There was just a peace, an incredible peace. And I experienced it for a moment. I am home. That earth that I was on is gone. I'm beyond the reach of Satan. There is no sin. There is no possibility of ever being lost. I am eternally his. He did what he said he would do. There was a sense he said he would come with his angels. He came with his angels. He did everything I preached, everything I said. It's true. He's all sufficient. He's everything that we need. There was a peace and a serenity beyond anything I could imagine. And people were, <clears throat> were just awed. Silence. There, there was an awe. There was, there was a peace that was absolutely indescribable. And a sense of, this is a new body. Nobody was looking at anybody else's body. I was not going to any loved one or relative or anything else. It was a sense, it, it was just that sense, it's all over. It's all over. It was all, it was all true. That sense of reality and truth, that was not the real world. This is the real world. This is eternity. That's all passed away. It was just a dream, like. It's just grass. That's what the Bible said. Flesh is just grass. It comes up and it withers and it's gone. It said, Lord, the world was created. Time was just a little piece. Eternity is a great big round cord, so to speak. Jesus, or God put, cut a little piece out called time and he gave it to man with his grace and mercy. And he said, here is my mercy, my glory, my grace. He gives you space and time to repent and trust in him. But then I remember in this serenity, said, but God, wait a minute. All of those who didn't come, all of those who were left behind, who thought they were, they were prepared and thought they were ready, they are not here. What about them, Lord? They're lost. There was a sense in me. Now, folks, that will not be there, but I believe God was, was letting me feel the sense of this lostness of those who, who <clears throat> were gone. And I, 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 suddenly, as I was thinking about all those who had not been gathered, I woke up, I, I sat right up, and I, th I said, this is the, the, the most incredible dream I've ever had in my life. And these words were like silent thunder in my head. David, be ye ready is no joking matter. And, and I laid back in the pillow, and, and God said, David, my people are not taking it seriously. They are not taking, they talk about it, but they're not taking it seriously. The way they're living, they are not taking it seriously. And many, many are going to be left behind. They are not ready. I said, but Lord, what about all this grace I've been preaching, all this mercy I've been preaching, about your glory? I've been telling everybody that your glory is your grace, your mercy, your tenderness, your long-suffering. And the Lord said, I am love, I am grace, I'm mercy, I'm tender-hearted, I'm long-suffering. But David, the day of grace is about to end. It's all going to end. I gave grace, mercy, and tenderness to bring men to the realization that I am bringing them into a new world. There's a new world coming. We're not living for this world. There has to be an awakening. <clears throat> God calls his grace all sufficient. But when he says all sufficient, he doesn't mean all sufficient just to let you, let you egg your way through life. It's not just to keep you from having a nervous breakdown. It's not so you can just cope with life. His grace is all sufficient that he prepares you for an eternal home with him. His grace is to take you not just through life, but through eternity. But there has to be a preparation for that time. Now, 